In this video, I'm going to talk about how UDP works with Electro Server 5. First, let's talk about how it compares to TCP. Um, you've probably heard that UDP is faster than TCP. Well, why is that? Uh, TCP guarantees that all messages sent will arrive at their destination, as long as the, the connection is, is uh, still connected. Uh, all messages will arrive at the destination, and they will arrive in order. Uh, UDP doesn't guarantee messages will ever arrive and doesn't guarantee the order of arrival. Uh, be because of that sort of unreliability of UDP, uh, it's not being uh, controlled, um, inspected, and you know, sort of queued or anything like that. It's just faster because it's just sh shot out, and you know, if it arrives, it arrives, and it just it just makes it a little bit faster. There's there's a lot more differences between UDP and TCP at the networking level that uh, I'm not going to get into mostly because I don't really know because uh, I'm not a networking guy but as a game developer all I really need to know is that UDP is faster but uh, cannot be relied on uh, f for uh, message ordering or f for guaranteed delivery of a message. Because of the unreliability of UDP Electro doesn't. Uh, Electro server doesn't support the ability for you to just have a single connection uh, between a client and the server that that is just UDP. Um, for example, imagine that you wanted to connect to Electro server with only UDP, and uh, you tried to log in, and you're waiting for the server to send you a response telling you that your login was accepted. Well, if you were only using UDP, that login response your login may have succeeded, uh, but your lo the login response sent to the client might not ever arrive. So y you could, for important messages, you could end up uh, getting into states where uh, you know you're kind of hanging and you don't really know what's going on. So um, Electro Server requires that you have a primary connection established first uh, before you can use UDP. And a primary connection would be just your typical TCP connection. Um, we have uh, other types of connections that are considered primary as well, but for the sake of this video, um, we'll just call that one binary TCP. If you establish a binary TCP connection uh, first, then then later you can establish a UDP connection. Okay, so I've been calling this a connection. Uh, my, my next point here has a connection in quotes. Uh, UDP is considered connectionless. You don't uh, you don't actually establish a connection between the client and the server when it comes to UDP. A message is just sent to an IP and port, um, and then if it are, if if the destination happens to be listening on that IP and port for a UDP message, then and it arrived, then uh, you know then the message was sent and received. Um, if the message happens to, to die along the way or the target that you're sending it to isn't listening, um, the sender is never informed of this. Uh, so it's not really a, there's never really a connection. Um, but we, call, we still call it a connection with the Electro Server API because we, we set it up to work as if it were a connection. When you, when you attempt to establish a UDP connection with Electro Server, there's a little bit of handshaking that goes on between the client and the server to make sure that the back and forth work. Um, they they send messages back and forth, and um, and if if this handshaking fails, then um, an event is dispatched in the client saying that the connection, the UDP connection failed. If the handshaking succeeds, then a, a message is dispatched saying that the connection succeeded. So we still treat it as if it were a connection because for all intents and purposes uh, from an API level it is a connection. So once uh, once we have a primary connection established we can then uh, establish a UDP connection. Um, <clears throat> Alright so what can you do with UDP? Um, well in Electro Server we assume that the, the pretty much the sole use of, of UDP is going to be for high message rates um, in in a game, and all games happen within a room, 
and all custom game logic happens within a, a plugin. So we provided the ability for you to uh, send messages from the client to the server over UDP, uh, but only plugin request messages. So the client sends a plugin request message over UDP to a room level plugin. Um, the client can also send a uh, a message to a server level plugin, but in general, it's going to be uh, UDP messages just going to room level plugins. So how does the client API actually send it over UDP instead of TCP? Um, we'll look at some code in, in a couple of minutes here, and I'll show you that. But but basically, when you call the when you call es.engine.send, um, in for other examples that you may have seen, you just call es.engine.send and you pass in a a request that you're sending. Well, to send over UDP, you would do the same thing, except you would add a second parameter which just specifies which connection to use, and you would specify the UDP connection. So uh, the, sir, the custom game plugin that you wrote will receive the, the message, um, and when it wants to respond to the clients, uh, it can respond over UDP as well. But th the way the server does it is, um, you know, there might be a lot of people in the room or in the game, and maybe some of them successfully have UDP connections established, and maybe some of them don't. So when the server sends a, a, a UDP message, or a tries to send a UDP message to clients, it just specifies when it's sending this message that it, uh, that it should be either reliable or unreliable. And when the... So uh, if, if the server specifies that the message should be reliable, then the message will go out over TCP. If the server specifies that the message should be unreliable, then the message might go out uh, per client over UDP. The server knows if you have a successful UDP connection established or not. And so if it, if it sees that one player doesn't have a UDP connection established, it'll still send that message to that user. It's just that it'll use TCP instead of UDP. So in general, if you're going to have a game with UDP, um, all the players will be able to successfully establish a UDP connection. But for those cases where that's not, the, uh, that's not a, rea a reality, um, you can still rest assured that the messages will, will be sent. So let me show you a little bit of client code. I have the uh, I have the UDP example from the Electro Server examples folder installed, and I've got the code for that example open here. Um, just before I walk through the code a little bit, let me let me show you the Unity application. And uh, actually, I have to start up Electro Server first. Okay, Electro Server is running, and I'm going to uh, click play on this application to. Uh, execute it and show you what this UDP example does. It's really simple. It just allows you first to establish a TCP connection. Click connect. And we're now uh, connected via TCP and we logged in and we joined a room. Now I'm going to click the connect UDP button and you can see that it uh, connected successfully. Now that we're connected via UDP, the client is just going to send a UDP message to the server. If I click this button, click. And uh, you can look in the logs here or up in here. Um, the client sent a UDP message to the server. The server then responded back to the client. All right, so let's just quickly look through some of this code here. Oh, and um, by the way, uh, uh, there's another video that sh that shows how to um, enable a custom policy file with Electro Server. Um, when it comes to UDP, um, you you know the UDP port you're going to connect to is different than the TCP port, and so the default policy file with Electro Server it it only gives you access to one port. So you're going to want to replace the policy file um, 
with a custom policy file is really easy to do and um, there's another video on, on how to do that. Um, so you'll need to replace that policy file before this example would work for you. Okay, so I'm not going to go over all the code in this uh, example uh, because it does a lot of basic things that have been covered before, like connecting, logging in, all that kind of stuff. So let's just look at the um, UDP connection attempt and the and then how you send a UDP message. All right, so let me search for dot connect. All right. So um, when the connect UDP button is clicked, uh, we attempt to establish a UDP connection here. Um, I need to show you where this stuff is defined first. Um, but yeah, so so let me come back to this in just a moment here. Um, available connection. All right. So up here, where um, where we where we configure on the server the available connections that are available, um, the first one here is the binary connection, and then the second one is the UDP connection, and it's got a couple more parameters than the the TCP one. Uh, the TCP one just has a host and uh, and port whereas the binary one has to also um, has to also specify you know a, a local a local port for the um, when Electro server sends a UDP message back to this client um, Electro server needs to know which port to use so it specifies a little bit more information in there um, and then when connect is called uh, it's just going to uh, connect to the first connection in the list, which is the TCP one. And then if we want to connect UDP later, we just pull that UDP connection information off of this server object and we and we try to connect. So let's go back to that part of the code. Okay. So in this part of the code, uh, we pull um, uh, the server object off of the um, API and then we grab the available connection uh, it's the second element in the array here, so uh, we grab it there, and then we tell the server to connect, or we tell the API to connect using that UDP connection. And then later, uh, a connection response is received uh, on connect here. Um, actually, uh, it's in the. Uh, you, you're going to want to look at the on a, the uh, connection attempt response and once you receive that uh, you know your connection has been established but before we run out of time on this YouTube video let me show you um, how you actually send a message to the server so plugin request okay so when somebody clicks on the send send UDP um, message button uh, this code is executed. We create a plugin request just like we normally would with any plugin request. Specify the zone ID, the room ID, the plugin name, and uh, we create an ES object to send to the plugin. And uh, we this example uses a custom a custom uh, plugin that has to be installed uh, before you can use the example. And in that plugin um, uh, it's listening for you know some special stuff. So it's listening for you to send a string with an with a, a name of action and a value of either send reliable or send unreliable. And um, you know these other properties are are you know you can put anything you want on here. We just happen to throw on a timestamp and and your username. And if you send it as an unreliable message, then it'll uh, the the plugin will then respond to you. Um, with an unreliable response. So anyway, I'll, I'll let you just you know go through these examples yourself, and uh, that's it for this video.